All right, y'all. Here we go. Let's set this up. What I'm going to do, make sure my, my pen is working here. Yeah, I got it. All right. Y'all having a good night tonight? Give me, some, give me some love, man. Let me know who's in here. Let's tackle this. All right. So we got Monty presents with a recent middle cerebral artery or MCA stroke here and right upper extremity spasticity, but can perform some motions out of synergy. Now, the th therapist would like to continue improving the patient's mobility and activation of muscles out of synergy. Which of the following is the best intervention to address the patient's current impairment? All right, so we have A, uh, lift pattern with right upper, uh, right arm leading. We have B, which is bilateral peripheral um, I, I'm messing, I'm messing up the freaking name, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation or upper extremity, uh, D2 extension. We got C is a chop pattern with left arm leading. And then we got D, which is rhythmic rotation and sideline position. I don't know what's wrong with me today, y'all. So what's your, what's your answer? AB, I see you in here, girl. Great to see you. Jewy, great to see you. Joanna, Trent, Nitty, uh, Andrea, my beautiful wife, Nicole. Orly. So tell me, what do y'all have right now as your answer? What's your go-to? What y'all think it is? Because I got a lot of A's. All right, let's just check it out. So where I start off with a question like this is obviously in the first part of the question where it says Monty presents with the recent middle uh, cerebral artery stroke and right upper extremity spasticity, but can perform some motions out of synergy. All right, so we need to stop there for a moment and look at, okay, so this patient has this middle cerebral artery stroke, upper extremity spasticity, which I expect with a patient who has this type of stroke. Upper extremity spasticity is very consistent. All right, cool. But it says that can perform some motions out of synergy. This is where I slow up because I start to ask myself, well, what is that consistent with when we're talking about Brunstrom stages? All right, and that's what I want y'all to put down for me right now. What's up, Kristen? Put down for me right now. Like, what Brunstrom stage is this for you? It's really important, all right? And so when I look at this, I'm like, all right, Brunstrom stage four, because I know that's the one that's out of synergy. Now, when I go down the question, it says the therapist would like to continue improving the patient's mobility and activation of the muscles out of synergy. All right, so that's, that's important for me to know. I like that, all right? Improving the patient mobility and activation of muscles out of synergy. That's our goal. That's what we're trying to achieve. It's still consistent with brunch from stage four. Now, the question in STEM or that last part of the question says, which of the following is the best intervention now to address the current impairment? Best intervention. All right. And all of these are interventions down here. Right. So let's go ahead and start dissecting these answer choices. All right, so the first one that we have is lift pattern with right arm leading. Now, I'm not sure how many of you would have already dropped down to the answer choice and started eliminating things, but what I really would have done was look up here where it says right upper extremity spasticity and made sense of that. What does that really mean? Because isn't there flexor synergy and the extensor synergy patterns? But it doesn't say anything like, like that. It doesn't say there's a flex or extensor. So this means that the question would like me to use the dominant components of the synergy. Do y'all know what that is? Do y'all know what I mean? So for the upper extremity, that's actually going to be, and I'm just going to abbreviate a little bit, elbow flexion. All right. That's going to be forearm pronation. I'm just going to put pro there. And then the other one is a shoulder a deduction. So I know for sure that my patient is presenting to me with those right there. Elbow flexion, forearm pronation, shoulder a deduction. See, I do that and I list those out before I even start dissecting these answer choices. Because now I know, well, that's in synergy. I need to make sure that my pattern that I'm using is going to bring the patient out of that. All right. So now let's look at a. A says lift pattern. So I need y'all to tell me right now, like, what is the lift pattern? What does that really mean? All right. You should be telling me that that's D2 flexion. All right. D2 flexion. And that consists of a lot of great things. All right. As far as my, my synergy pattern and pulling the person out of synergy, it, it's a lot of great things because it's going to give me shoulder abduction. I like that. 
It's going to give me forearm supination. It's going to be elbow extension. All right, so it's a lot of different motions that are pulling my patient out of synergy. I love lift pattern, T2 flexion. Love it. All right, now here's the deal. What does this last part mean, though, with right arm leading? What does that mean to y'all? All right, did y'all catch that? Because this is what would, this is one factor, and this is my secret right here, um, of how I get these questions right, because I know exactly what this lead arm means. And in this specific situation, the, the right arm leading means that the right arm is moving into the lift pattern. That's what it means. And that's what I want. Because the right arm is the one that's affected. It's the one that's spastic, elbow flexion, forearm pronation. All right. So I want the right arm to move into the lift pattern or D2 flexion. So this is exactly what I want. But the other piece that you need to know about what a right arm leading means is that the left arm is actually grabbing onto the right and assisting it in moving in that direction. That's what that really means. All right, so lift pattern with right arm leading. I love it. That makes a lot of sense. But as always, we don't we don't just go with A and just move on. We definitely need to make sure that B, C, or D are not the best answer. All right, so let's look at, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and put a check mark there. Let's look at B. B says bilateral, P and F, U, uh, upper extremity, D2 extension. All right, so I need you all to think about that for a moment. What position is, am I bringing the patient in when I'm doing upper extremity D2 extension? Super important. First of all, I don't like B already. And the reason why I don't like B is my patient is just moving out of synergy, right? Brunch from stage four. This is bilateral P and F upper extremity D2 extension, meaning that the patient's doing it by themselves, bringing them through their, through that motion. It's highly unlikely that the patient is going to have that much voluntary control to be doing that the way I want them to do it, all right? Even if I wanted them to do D2 extension, they probably don't have the voluntary control to do it effectively by themselves. They need the other arm to help. So that's already one reason why I don't like the bilateral, all right? But here's the other piece, y'all. The other piece is the fact that upper extremity D2 extension brings the arm into forearm pronation, shoulder a deduction all right these positions that i don't want them that's actually bringing the patient into the synergy pattern i don't want that again the pnf upper extremity d2 extension is going to bring the patient into shoulder a deduction it's going to also bring them into forearm pronation i do not want that so bilateral pnf upper extremity d2 extension is out for a lot of different reasons all right, let's look and see how many of y'all right now. I see you, Carolina. I see you, Nitty. All right, so how many of y'all think the answer is C at this point? Because I really was between A and C. And so let's go ahead and look at C. C says chop pattern with the left arm leading. Chop pattern with the left arm leading. Now, this is going to be really important because you know, the chop pattern is really what we call that D1 extension, all right? And the chop pattern, not necessarily a bad pattern to move into with your upper extremity or even the right, but the deal is the fact that at the end of the answer choice, it says the left arm is leading. Y'all saw that, right? Left arm was leading. So what does that mean? That means that the left arm is the one that's going into the chop pattern. So if the left arm is going into the chop pattern, that D1 extension, then what position must the right arm be going into? All right, think about it. So in this situation, the right arm is going to be holding on to the left. The left arm's going into D1 extension. What position, I'm asking y'all, is the right arm going to be going into? Can y'all tell me, Chatal, Dolores, can you tell me that? Because that's super important. And if you really look at this, if you take a step back from the computer or your iPhone, wherever you're at right now, and you move yourself into D1 extension for your right, uh, for your left arm, and, and, and see what motion your right arm is moving into, you'll notice that the right arm actually moves into a D2 extension. Pretty much the same thing that B is saying. Your right arm is actually moving into a D2 extension. We already said that we would not want that because that's going to put the, 
put the uh, arm into shoulder adduction. It's going to put the forearm into forearm pronation. We don't want that. So C cannot be the right answer. You see that the secret here is determining what arm is the one that's leading and what arm is moving into what position. C is not correct. It's actually totally not what I would want my patient to do because that's moving into the synergy pattern. Let's look at D. D says rhythmic rotation in the sideline position. Now, rhythmic rotation is a nice intervention. I love it. I, I really like this. And the reason being is that rhythmic rotation is used to reduce spasticity, tone, of rigidity. It's a great exercise to do or intervention to do. The one thing is that it's very passive. You're rotating the patient side to side. It's usually used for the trunk, all right? Rotating the body passively in sideline position. I like D, but it does not answer the question because the patient, we're trying to get them to move out of synergy and do that actively. We want them to activate the muscles. It says that in the question, y'all, right up top, right? Rhythmic rotation is a passive activity. And therefore, I eliminate D. Our final answer is A, y'all. A, lift pattern with the right arm leading. If you got this question correct, congratulations. If you didn't, that's cool. Listen, I have a cheat sheet that has the PNF and lead patterns all in it. It explains the whole thing. If that's something that you would like and something that you're interested in, definitely put cheat sheet in the comment box. Put it down right now. Cheat sheet, all capital letters. I'll make sure I get it out to you. Again, that's the PNF and lead arm uh, PDF a document that I have that teaches you a bit more in detail what you need to know for the MPTE.